everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz this week. I am Jeff Antoniak. So what I want to do is talk about a little stylistic difference between swing music and bebop music. So style, the style of swing, let's call that sort of 30s, 40s, think big band kind of stuff, and then bebop. So 40s into the 50s, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, all that. So now, of course, there was a continuum between that music. There were people that played in both styles. It happened on the same street in the same city, but there was this kind of change that went on. Now, 50, 60, 70 years later, um, we get expected to play those songs side by side in a set. And so I hear this from some of my students, a lot of the people inside Jazzwire is, how do we play? How, how, are, how do we sound convincing between these styles? And there's some very uh, tangible, mechanical things that we can do. So I want to jump into this with you. Okay, so swing music. So I'm talking about Duke Ellington. How about this one? Uh, in a mellow tone. <laughs> Man, I love that tune. Beautiful song. Uh, very lyrical, very romantic sounding, all that kind of stuff. Now, how about a Charlie Parker tune like um, Scrapple from the Apple? <laughs> All right, so they sound different, right? One, the, the bebop tune had more notes in it. The bebop tune was a little faster. The first uh, Ellington tune was a little slower. It was a little more lyrical. So, so we're using words like that, but swing music was plenty fast too. And Charlie Parker didn't play everything fast, so it's not a tempo-related thing. And so lyrical, there's plenty of lyrical beautiful melodies inside bebop. So, so how do we talk about what the difference was? Did you notice some differences there? We could talk about my tone, absolutely, that when we're playing swing music, it might be a rounder sound, again, a more lyrical, romantic, sweet sound, whatever that means. Um, with bebop, it might be sort of a harder sound. So that's all important stuff. But there's one really important thing that I sort of want to get to. Jazzwire Winter Summit 2024 online workshop. This is an incredibly powerful place for all instruments, an opportunity to work together and play together, get fired up like never before. We have musicians just like you who join us from all around the world, from Australia and Canada to Germany and Norway and everywhere else. I hope you'll have the opportunity to join us as well. We have a faculty that I've handpicked, fantastic players, but incredible communicators, great teachers. From Los Angeles, we have producer and piano player, Wayne Wilentz. Joining us from Toronto is professor and fantastic trumpet player, Chase Sanborn. From here in the Washington DC area is master guitarist, Steve Herberman. I will be teaching as well. And stay tuned, we're gonna be adding more faculty and some super special guests to the faculty list. So keep coming back to the website and we'll have updates for you. If you're trying to imagine what an online jazz workshop could possibly be like, or if you've attended something in the past and it wasn't great, well, yeah, I understand. There's a lot of ways to get it wrong. Here at Jazzwire, we have produced thousands of hours of workshops like this over the years. We know what we're doing. We know how to make it incredibly powerful and actionable for you. Now, we only have 21 spots. These get sold up incredibly quickly. So I hope you'll jump on it, and I hope I have a chance to work with you January 26th through 28th, 2024. See you there. So take a look at this PDF for today, and I think you're gonna see what's going on. I'm talking about how do we end a phrase. When I was playing the Duke Ellington tune, <laughs> versus the Charlie Parker tune. A longer note on the first swing tune, and then that chopped off bebop sound. ba do ba do ba da bebop, bebop. That's what's going on. So look at the PDF. Item number one, 
Can you play this line? That simple, and we want to taper that last note. The first time, I put a little vibrato on it. Didn't mean to, but I did. The second time, I left the vibrato off. Either works. But that idea of a long phrase ending, that's more like swing. That is lyrical. That is romantic sounding. A bebop version that bop bebop that bebop ending it's short it's a little harsher and people would call it urban or they would call it gritty or they would call it rhythmic but it's not exactly romantic and it's not exactly lyrical and it's not really how the human voice would normally sing something that was one of the big innovations of bebop. So when you're playing a bebop tune and you're not snapping those last notes of every phrase off, you're doing it wrong. So that's what I have to coach some people is to get those phrase endings tighter. Here's the thing, that's not easy to do. Whether you're muting strings with your right hand or lifting the string with your left hand, if you're a bass player or a guitar player, or what it takes on a wind instrument, to do that, to hit a note and have it stop dead without going sharp or flat or squeak or miss pitch or whatever, that's a big deal. So I'm not here today to talk about the technique of trombone or flute or saxophone, but the musical concept. Listen to it. Listen to your favorite players play and see if they're playing with longer phrase endings or shorter. Perhaps they're mixing them up. It's a very cool thing to listen to. So you need to practice the long notes. That's what we see here in item number three, those long notes. Not at all an easy thing to do. Now, if you're playing piano, sure, the piano is going to sustain as long as it's going to sustain. But here's the thing. You actually have to work on lifting the key. When are you going to lift that key? And the opposite, of course, would be a bebop thing, right? So that idea of tapering long notes is really a big deal, and especially on a wind instrument. Guitar, bass, they have a natural sustain, so we have to think about the release of that long note after its natural decay. On a horn, with our voice, we have to actively taper. We have to make it sound like it's decaying. Not easy to do, but I'm challenging you to uh, practice that a little bit. So let's do this. Let's look at the last item on the sheet, and this is more of a bebop sort of phrasing, and we have to think about the tightness of that last note. Hopefully that sounded easy to do. It's not. To be able to play long, short, to play accented and more accented, do dot, bebop. And by the way, that's where the phrase bebop came from. So I got to work with Dizzy Gillespie for a week as a college student, and he was in town and he worked with our band a bunch during that week. And he told this story of where did uh, that term bebop come from. I heard this from Dizzy Gillespie in my ear. Now I'm telling you. I don't know if it's a true story because Dizzy kind of liked to, uh, he was a great orator. Um, I don't even care if it's a true story because I heard it from Dizzy and it makes a lot of sense. He was talking about he and Charlie Parker playing at Minton's Playhouse on 52nd Street in New York City. And, um, and a reviewer from the New York Times or whatever came to listen to what these crazy young kids were doing, this you know new music that was being played. Um, and they were playing what we know as bebop. The reviewer hated it. It was angular and you couldn't dance to it and it was harsh and their sounds weren't pretty and it was abrupt and eh. And so uh, the next day the, the writer wrote this scathing review and called it this terrible bebop music, which was supposed to be sort of a put down. It was bebop, right? Um, but the reviewer heard something important. He heard the phrase endings and how different it was from the tapered phrase endings of what came before, bebop. So Dizzy told that story, and so he got on stage the next night and said, well, we're gonna play some of that bebop music that the, uh, that the Times liked so much, or whoever it was. Um, so I, again, don't know if it's a true story, but I heard it from Dizzy. And I love that story, and I've told it a 100 times because it lets us know what the phrase endings are supposed to be. It's not bebop, 
It's not that, it's be bop, that energy. We go to the end of the phrase. And it's a challenge on a lot of these instruments. So I tell you what, I want you to be listening for this in the music that you love to listen to. And yes, good musicians are going to vary it. You'll hear a swing musician play a short phrase. Yes, that'll happen. In general, long phrases. Bebop musicians are gonna be playing short phrases. They may play five or six short phrases in two measures, in three measures, a lot of little short phrases. Of course, you'll hear a long note every once in a while in bebop too. You get the sense of it. So this is huge to being shifting between those two closely related but entirely different styles. Articulation, but specifically the end of the note. It's a big deal. This is gonna make you a deeper, more professional sounding musician. Give it a try.